baseball. Hey guys, Dale Colvin here. This week uh, I'm going to go over a little bit of a drop shot basic. Give you guys a little tutorial on how I drop shot on Bull Shoals Lake. Uh, starting off, I'm going to show you how to rig it, what I use it on. Then we're going to go out on the water and show you kind of what to look for and where to fish it. So, starting off, um, Using a spinning rod, uh, this is a ducket. It's uh, medium heavy. You want something with just a little bit of tip where you still want to be able to feel the bite. Uh, and I'm going to do a braid. This is 20 pound braid. This is a 2000 series reel. Pretty much I'm going to do take 20 pound braid and I'm going to do a go to 10 pound fluorocarbon. If the water's super clear. Uh, you can go to 8. I don't usually go anything lower than 8. Uh, you can do a double uni. Uh, I do an Alberto knot. Comfortable, whatever you're comfortable using, that's what you're going to want to use. So, um, this knot's tough to see on camera. Obviously, you guys can uh, you can go online. You can check that out uh, if you want to look it up. The Alberto knot. That's a pretty good knot for me. It's pretty easy to tie once you figure out where your hands go. <clears throat> but one of the key things you want to look for when you're tying after you tie up is the length of the leader. That's pretty important. I typically like to keep the leader length about the 20 foot range. So once once I have that tied on, what I'll do is I'll reel the braid and the fluorocarbon into the into the reel. Uh, this this rod six foot nine, so if I hold hold about 12 foot out and reel it all the way down to the reel. I should be about 20 foot. And then I can always check it with the depth finder. Um, <clears throat> give or take a little bit. This isn't something you're typically going to make long casts with when you're drop shotting. So. Give yourself a little extra squat. Uh, what I like to use is a size 1 Gamagatsu hook. It's a super tiny hook, guys. Uh, this is their drop shot hook. Uh, the big thing with this is I get, well, it's such a small hook that it's kind of tough to, tough to see, but uh, you guys caught some big fish on this little tiny hook don't be afraid of that hook some guys will bend it out a little bit uh, take a pair of pliers and you can actually open up this hook just a little bit and that'll help your hookup percentages that's not much just a little bit and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a polymer knot once again, you can do whatever knot you're comfortable doing. Uh, the key with with whatever knot you're doing, once you're done, you want to run the tag in down the line. So when you run your tag in through the hook, you want your hook to stand outright. I start my polymer going through the hook side of the knot. And then what I'll do is I'll run my tag on back through. What this does is it makes sure that your hook stays upright. So when your hooks hook your weights on the bottom, your bait's gonna stay upright, which is important in clear water. It's gonna help you hook up with more fish. And then Depending on the day, I'll use anything from 3 16 quarter ounce up to 3 8 um, 
bull soles. You can use the little teardrops or the round ones. If you get around grass, you're going to want to use the teardrop or the cylindrical. Um, these just pinch on the line, so I do a pinch and just a simple overhand knot. And my leader length is about 16 inches there. 16 to 80, 18 inches is kind of ideal uh, depending on the day. In the winter time, you want to go pretty much shorter leader length. You'll be more 6 to 8 inches. Um, I've gone up to about 2.5 feet if I'm fishing a lot of brush piles. Then, depending on what what bait you want to use. Typically I'm going to use uh, robo worms. Uh, they work very well on bull soles depending on the day and the water clarity. There's a couple different couple different ones that I like to use. Uh, Yamamoto shad shape worm. If it's cloudy and they're on shad that one will work. Uh, these little strike king ones these are good too. And when you typically, typically 90% of the time, I'm just going to head hook the bait. So when this sits in the water, this bait will sit like this, and bass will eat everything by the head. They they know which end is the head. So the second you feel a tick, you with that being nose hooked, you want to you want to set the hook right away when you feel it. So that's the basic setup. Take you guys out on the water, kind of show you some places where you want to throw it, and we'll uh, hopefully catch a few for you for the video. Thanks. Hi, Albert. Hey guys, one of the one of the places I'm gonna check when I'm out fishing is gonna be bluff ends. Uh, anywhere you come in. You've got a shallow flat that comes out and it rolls off. On one side you've got bluffs and the other side you've got a flat. Where these contours get real tight, you're going to have all the ledges. There's some brush piles out there. Um, typically what I like to do is go and I'll, I'll go over the area and graph it. If I see any active fish, I'll stop immediately and fish or roll through the area. If I see signs of bait fish, then I'll go through and come back around. Um, bluff ends, bluffs, that's one of the places you want to check when you're drop shotting. Uh, summertime, it's hot, it's fishing 101. One of the other things you'll, you want to check when you get out is when you drop your bait, if you drop it down right next to the trolling motor, you got the transducer mount on the trolling motor, you should be able to see your bait. That, these two little lines, that's my bait right there. There's the fish. Drops it right in the fish, and there he is. Uh, a little KY, that's okay. We'll take them. So when you see the fish down there, guys, if you get on top of them and lower down to them, you'll catch them. Um, once you catch one, a lot of times, Especially with Kentuckys, there's going to be a bunch of them down there. They don't, they don't swim alone. So uh, these particular fish have been schooled up, so we should be able to get into a few more. Um, just make sure when you drop your your bait down, you actually see the bait down there. And if you see the bait down there, you see the fish. It makes it a little bit easier than fishing blind. Come on up here again. There's a school down there. There's one here. There's three or four of them down here in 25 feet. So I'm going to drop again. You should be able to see the bait going down. If you don't, you can adjust your cone or your sensitivity until you can get until you get to where you can see your bait. If you lose your bait, just bring it up or down a little bit. It'll look like a little heartbeat on the monitor. Uh, that's the bait going down right above the fish. There's, I'll give it a little jerk and you'll see how it goes up. 
those are just some of the tools you're going to want to use when you're out here drop shopping. So, next thing I, I look for when I'm fishing bluffs, guys, um, right now I'm in 35 foot of water and I'm 20 feet, 15, 20 feet away from the shoreline. So, this is be the one time where I kind of lob cast the bait and I'll get that. I don't want to get right on the face of the bluff, but I want to get right off of it. And what I'll do is I'll keep that line tight the whole time. Pretty much the whole key to this whole drop shot rig is being able to feel the bite the whole time. So as you're, as you're dragging the bait, if you look up on these bluffs, you can see some of these places, if I, if I drag it six inches, the bait might drop 10 feet off one of those ledges. So as I'm going through, I'll work the bait back to the boat you know, anywhere, you know, 20, 20, 30, 20, 30 feet of water, I'll keep the boat in and I'll work the bait all the way back to the boat, dropping it off the ledge and keeping it tight the whole time. There's a bite. And that's a good way to cover water. Once you get, get around, you know, just keep, keep working the, working the bluff. You might not want to bite off like a mile of bluff, but if you, you know, you got a hundred yards of bluff, you can fish the whole thing. You got two guys, it makes it a little bit easier to cover some ground, so. So here's the first drop off. And if we go back, scroll back here, you can kind of see, that's what a school of fish looks like. Um, these are probably Kentuckys, we're in, we're in 20 foot of water, there's one more right off the ledge. So anywhere you come across and you see that drop off like that, a lot of times it'll either be right up on the ledge or on the top or the bottom. So when you're graphing you always want to be paying attention what, where you're at and what's going on down there. This is what I was saying about in the water, guys, where your worm's gonna stand upright. You don't have to add a lot of action to it. I'm holding the bait still. I'm trying to hold the rod still and it's moving. See how the bait's standing horizontal. So that's why it's really important when you hook that on there, that's what the bait looks like. And you don't have to put a lot of action. I'm pretty much holding the rod still and that thing's quivering all over the place. So um, when you're out here fishing, keep in mind, pay a little attention to detail when you head hook it. Sometimes you can whack your rig and once you get the school fired up, it doesn't even matter. You catch one or two of them, you can just wacky hook it and throw it out there. One of the other things I look for will be these fish will suspend out in deep water. We're in a hundred foot of water right here. This tree comes up to about 50 foot and there's fish anywhere from 30 to 40 foot. So that's one of the other places I'm going to look for when I'm drop shotting. A lot of times uh, they'll suspend like this if they're not running water or generating a lot of water. So that's another place you can look if you're going to go drop shot. The trees that are better are usually the ones that are near the creek channel, so that's one other thing you can look for if you're out drop shotting. Probably Kentuckys. We're in, we're in 20 foot of water. There's one more right off the ledge. So anywhere you come across and you see that drop off like that, a lot of times it'll either be right up on the ledge or on the top or the bottom. So when you're graphing, you always want to be paying attention what, where you're at and what's going on down there. Just gotta get one to fire and then they'll start eating.
Uh, the last place I'm going to check, or one of the first places I'm going to check, will be a point. Points are the most obvious structure to fish. Uh, if you can find a point, this particular point is a long point that comes way out. We're 200 yards off the shore here. Um, these contour lines get real tight. And off this point, once you find a spot well, that rolls off to the off the ledges and you find a brush pile, that can be a win-win right there. Um, that's the spot on the spot. So this is going to be another area that you're going to want to put your drop shot in. Um, there's some fish on this tree. You can see them in here. Uh, depending on your graph, you know, whether it's a hummingbird, you guys should all be able to pick up fish on the sonar. Um, this is pretty distinct here. So typically when I, I'm going to fish a brush pile, what I'll do is I'll put the boat right over it. I'm going to drop my bait right over the top of that tree. If you got the Minn Kota, you can lock it in. Um, Watch your bait go down. Don't drop it directly into the tree right away. Kind of hover it over it. You know, this tree comes 12 foot, 12 foot uh, below the surface. So I'm gonna start right there. A lot of times you'll, you'll see those fish come up on a graph and eat the bait. So that's just one thing you wanna look for when you're out there um, fishing these points and these spots, these brush piles. If you can find a brush pile that's not marked, that could be a great spot for you. Good luck drop shotting guys. I hope I hope this helps some of you guys out. Um, where to fish it, how to fish it, and show you a couple catches. Thanks. It's hard to leave fish, you know. Yeah. But we're gonna 